everyone. I'm Remy. I'm one of the BITS maintainers. Uh, so BITS for the Brain Imaging Data Structure. And today I'm here with uh, Kay Robbins and Yong Trung. And we're going to be talking about uh, HEAD for uh, hierarchical event descriptors. Uh, and I'm going to first have Kay and uh, Yong to introduce themselves. So, and then we'll just jump right in. So, um, Kay, you want, to, you want to introduce yourself first? Okay. Um, so I'm Kay Robbins. I'm a professor emeritus at UT San Antonio, and I'm part of the head working group. Um, and uh, my colleague, Young, I'll let, you know, is a graduate student at UCSD. And our group has been meeting intensively for several years. Um, our goal is to make large-scale neuroimaging really possible and accurate. And we see HEAD as an enabling technology for doing that. And we're not there yet, but we're making really good progress. Okay. Uh, so maybe just for people who don't exactly know what it is, because if you've gone through the big specification, you might know it's there, right? But uh, very few people <laughs> read it from top to bottom, right? So right. what is HEAD? So, you know, what, what, what does it stand for and uh, what goes into it and so on? Like, give us like maybe like the, you know, the elevator pitch about HEAD. So HEAD stands for hierarchical event descriptors. And it's a way of describing events um, so that people can understand what the event represents, but also that it provides a sort of a standard API so you can write algorithms that use it um, without having to hard code specifics. It, it, um, it, in other words, it's machine actionable. Mm -hmm. you, you, you do your annotation and um, tools can use it directly without intervention from you. And HEAD is supported by bids. It's been supported for quite a while. Um, but it, and it's used to, just, um, to give the details about what actually happened in your experiment. So. Right. Yeah, because that, that would be my question, or maybe a question some people might have is that, okay, uh, but doesn't bids already? Do what you describe, you know, we can already, you know, we already have like an events file in bids. That's just a, pretty much a, a, ta a tabular file, a table that's going to say what happened when. So what is like the added value of head, for example? Um, well, bids is great, but it focuses mainly on file structure, um, data format, how you organize the information in your data set in the large. Um, the problem is that this information is not enough to, to really do analysis. And um, so users of the data are going to have to go to the literature and delve into the details of the methods and hope that the information is there. And yeah, and hope it. And um, the goal of HEAD is to eliminate a lot of this by having that information be put up front in the data in a way that's understandable. So people can look at the experimental data and, and say, okay, this is what happened in the experiment. I understand the experiment. And your um, tools can work on it to give you results directly from there. I think there are three really important points about all of this. Um, the first one is that most imaging modalities, most imaging experiments need to have accompanying event files. Now you mentioned, yeah, they have event files. Well, um, it's extremely important that in an event file, you actually report events. And you know, an event of file is... A, so basically a list of things that happened during the event with the, uh, during the experiment with the times that they happened. And there are lots of things that happen that people forget to re record in the, in the event file, like when the recording was actually recording or when it was doing baseline or when an experimental condition changed, when the subject was given an instruction or, or presented a stimulus or had a response. And if those 
uh, pieces of critical information about the experiment are not in the data, they can't be recovered. They're not going to be recovered from the methods uh, section of a paper. And most analysis is, if you're going to do it right, it needs that type of information. So the first thing is, if the data isn't there, there's nothing that any annotation can do to save it. Um, and so it's really important that people do report all of the relevant events in the experiment. Um, now in bids, the, the mechanism for, uh, just because you have reported a list of times in, so I've seen event files and bids where all that's given is the two required columns, which are the onsets and the durations. And there's no information about what happened at those times. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and BIDS provides a, a really nice mechanism for uh, associated the meanings of what's in that event file um, with the data. And that's in something called a JSON sidecar. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a JSON file that's named in a manner similar to the events file. And um, in, in the bear, if you're not using head, you can say, well, this column meant this and et cetera. But if you use head, you can put annotations in there to give detailed meaning about what each item in that event file meant. And with this, it, it allows you to, as, as I mentioned, actually write algorithms to analyze um, the events. Um, the second, well, the third thing that's important about head and bids and the overall interaction is that, um, <coughs> sorry, most event, most experiments have a similar set of events for all recordings, um, <coughs> sorry, at least a superset of events. Um, and bids allows you to make one JSON sidecar that defines the meanings of the columns for all of the uh, data in your, in your um, data set. Excuse me, just a minute, I'm go going for to- it, Go for it. It's so always when we're recording, obviously, that <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that it is so, um, so, so the the key points to reiterate is if if you don't um, provide data, it, there's nothing that yeah. can save the data set. It's yeah. not going to be usable. The second thing is that it's pretty easy in bids using head to associate what you put in your event file with meaningful things that can be analyzed. And the third thing is that you really only need to do it for once mm -hmm. for, you know, because the same JSON sidecar can be used for, to apply to all of the data in your um, file. So once you do this annotation, then tools can automatically assemble the annotations for the events. They can um, do searching based on text rather than writing complicated formulas for if it's this, then do this or this. Right. Um, and it, it makes analysis a lot more powerful and um, well, the idea is to make it easier. Right. And, and possible and that you only have you can apply the same analysis across studies mm -hmm. so the same vocabularies are used for um, and the same mechanisms are used across studies so you write one set of tools um, and they can be applied in in these larger data settings so um, that's sort of the um, Heads in, head in a nutshell, um, we have some nice tools and Young, I think, is going to uh, give us some more details about that. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Young, you want to sort of maybe give us a sort of a, a more concrete example. So, we've, let's say we've had the theory. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm turning to you and you can give us like an example of like maybe how you would do it in practice on, on an example of the data set or how you would sort of use those, um, those tags, for example. 
Sure, sure. Yeah, so um, let me start sharing my screen. Yeah, so um, if, if any of you is listening just to the audio version of this, uh, either just go to the slides that will be in the show notes, or yeah, I don't know, jump on YouTube and just have a look at the at the video content that will be uh, as as effective. Right. Um, okay. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. So um, so here um, is a page that we created so that people can look at the um, head. Um, schema, so we call it the schema. So it basically the vocabulary that we mm -hmm. use for head. Um, and so from this page, you can navigate and explore the schema, um, expand and collapse the different um, subtrees. And then when you hover around a tree item, then you will see the description of what that tag means and to see if that will fit your intent to annotate your data set. Um, so one um, nice feature that we introduced in the new generation of head is that um, you can just use the single note term. So central event, for example, directly in your annotation, instead of like before you have to specify the full path. So like event slash sensory event. All so right. you can imagine. The path is described on the right, for example. Of the right. Screen. And now you can just use like the, the end point sort of uh, of that full path. Right. So you can imagine that you have um, 10 different tags in your annotation and it all full path is very hard to read. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's a very nice feature that we added um, in the next, uh, the new generation. Um, the other thing that we also um, introduce um, for the um, head is that, so here for the schema, the base schema that we provide, we had six different top level items. So we mm -hmm. meant the schema to cover most of the content of the cognitive neuroscience experiment. But we can imagine, um, you know, different subfield might have a lot of different specific vocabulary they want to use, right. um, and we don't necessarily want to proliferate the schema with those uh, details. And so we have a mechanism we call library schema. So now sub communities um, can create their own schema, um, having their specific vocabulary, and then using like uh, the namespace mechanism, similar to programming, then you can combine your um, library term with the root schema in your annotation. Um, so, for example, right now we have a um, score library schema, which is a um, schema for annotating um, clinical EEG um, data set, mm -hmm. um, be building up, um, as well as um, some language library schema and movie annotation library schema. So I think it would be a nice um, way so that, you know, sub-community can organize their own, um, develop their own vocabulary and can also use that within the head system. Um, Another features of head is that um, so when you do your annotation, you, know, you provide the head tags and you can also group the head tags in parentheses for tag groups. Um, and that will create a head string. Now, if you intend to use that head string multiple times in your annotation, um, what you can do is that you associate that head string with a name. And so we call that a definition. And then you can use that defined name um, later on in your annotation um, to represent those head string without repeating the whole um, string itself. And that is a very nice feature so you know, you avoid repetition, but also um, it make it easier for you to update your annotations. So if you wanna add more details to your annotation, you only need to do it once at the definition. And then that will be, the update will be applied across your annotation. Um, and the definition mechanism also allow you to um, specify what we call the temporal scope of the event. So you can imagine um, in your experiment, um, for example, you start playing a movie and you have um, you know, different things started at the beginning of playing the movie, but that will be a context, context that apply a, you know, throughout the duration of the movie being played. Um, so you can define a move, play movie, and then um, if you add it with the onset and offset tag, that will set up the context for that um, play movie um, event. And then all the interleaving event will inherit the tag of the onset. Um, and that will enable a contextualized analysis later on. Um, and so, then the last thing, oh yeah, sorry. No, so for example, you could have, you could say, you could define different type of events that are happening. Uh, you could add several tags to each event that to build a definition saying like a face, my face event has this and this and this characteristics and you can add tag. And then you can say when each of those events is happening during your experiment, right? For example, is that am I right. I'm trying to sort of like rephrase it in a shorter way? Is that is that more or less the idea, for example? Yeah. So you can, um, for example, you can have a multiple different tasks to describe that phase um, presentation event. 
right? Um, so, um, but if you say that um, you present this phase for um, a specific duration, mm -hmm. um, then you can specify that temporal scope using the head annotation. And then the tags associated with that phase presentation will be applied also um, in the interleaving event within that duration. Right. Um, that would be like a context, um, you know, for the interleaving event. Um, yeah, and so um, the last feature I want to um, point out with the new um, head is that you can also um, specify um, experiment condition variable, control variable. Um, so we have special tag to um, specify them. Um, and so if you um, annotate um, these condition variable um, and you, specifically if you provide the temporal scope for them, then we can have automatic tools to go into your event file and um, reconstruct your experiment design automatically. Okay. Um, and also can compute um, statistic of your condition variable, for example, for you so that you can verify, okay, like I say that I, pre I tend to present phase image, um, you know, between um, with the lag of five to 15 trials, but is that actually the case, for example? Right. So, um, things like that um, you can do using the um, experiment um, structure features that we provide in head. And that, um, that obviously it's good as a, you know, if you're a data curator and you're creating your data set, it's great to have this as a set edit check, but obviously from the other side as a data consumer, then you can have a much richer description of the data set, right? That's, I mean, that's just like, that's the goal. But the idea is that, you know, for example, now the base validator tell you, well, you have this and this imaging modality and those tasks, but ideally then you could also have, yeah, and here's a summary of like the actual design and task content, for example, right? Right. Um, yeah, like with, if you have that annotation, then you can, as a data user, you can see clearly, you know, when did this condition start? When does right. the condition end? Um, what is the con variable being controlled here in the experiment actually and has varied you know throughout the recording or even throughout um, the subjects for example right. so um, yes you can read that in the method uh, section of the paper but now um, you have that um, you can easily verify um, directly on the data set um, so um, it actually it has the potential and we plan to have it enable a lot more as far as analysis because if you have if you know, what condition variables are in effect in various places, and you can then extract features where where different control variables are concerned. You can ex actually construct your design matrix for the epochs in your data automatically, right. and uh, so there's a lot of things that tools can do to uh, automate the uh, analysis. Um, in a very, very general way, you know, across studies. So we're looking forward to that as yeah. well. And, and, and also because it relies on a standardized um, schema and underlying terminology, then, you know, instead of having several people giving like full text description of each of the condition, you can always just rely, if they use this, then you can always just pull things across studies because they use the same language pretty much, right? So that, that really uh, helps with like, you know, when you want to, I don't know, do a mega analysis or whatever, then it really becomes super powerful, right? Yeah, that's really the hope that we can actually enable uh, mega analysis. Because <laughs> yeah. without that, it means too tedious and laborious <laughs> to even think yeah. about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, I can show an example of actually how head work within bits to annotate a data set um, or like um, an events file. So here, um, we use an example of a memory task. I think the Sternberg task, um, I think it's pretty well known with the community, but um, just a quick overview of what the experiment design is. Um, so each trial start with a fixation cross and they will follow by a sequence of letters. Um, there will be black letters to indicate that these are the letters to be memorized by the subjects. And then green uh, will be the letters to be ignored. And so after about eight um, letters presented, um, after the dash symbol present, there will be a red probe letter and asking the subject if this letter, one of the black letter appeared previously. And then if it's the target letter, then the subject press the right button, um, mouse click, or um, if not, there would be a left mouse, um, mouse click. 
and there'll be a feedback event, and then the next trial start with a new fixation class. Mm -hmm. um, so here, would, um, what um, the events.tc file might look like um, for this data set. And again, so in bits, the only two column real required is the onset and duration. <laughs> and you can imagine the event file having just these two columns and nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously we want to give more details about what actually happened. And so um, head um, support the annotation of any arbitrary number of columns in the events file. And so um, traditionally, most people use only one column, for example, like the trigger column. And you know, each value of that column would be the, the trigger code. And that can have any combination of you know, both what was presented and the experimental purpose of that. Mm -hmm. um, but with um, head, really, um, you can have your events file organized in you know, orthogonal matters. So here we separate, um, have three columns really to um, describe all the aspect of the ex um, e experiment. So we have the type column um, and the value of the type will be what actually happened in the experiment. So like the show letter event and the button press event, um, the feedback event. And then we have a column we call it purpose uh, to um, describe the exper experimental purpose of what happened. Um, and then the last column is called letters to um, denote which letter we presented on the screen. And so I will show you next how now given this orthogonal design of the event file, how you can annotate with head. Um, so as Kay mentioned, um, you will put the head annotation um, recommendedly in the JSON file accompanied with the TSV. Um, and you can do it only one, and you know, in the top level events file, and that can be applied to all the TSV in your BIS data set. Um, so for example, here, if we uh, annotate the type column, um, in the dictionary of type, you can have um, a dictionary head, and then um, each key can be the unique um, value of that column. Mm -hmm. And then the value will be the head annotation for right. that um, specific type. Um, so for example, here we um, describe that the show letter event is a sensory event, it's a visual presentation modality. Um, and then you can add more um, head tags to describe further details if you so choose as well. Right. Um, so then we have the sensory event and then we also have the participant action event um, describing here as well as the feedback, for example, or use the head tags from the schema. Um, and then, you know, for the purpose column, you can also um, provide annotation for those as well. And so for the target, for example, we annotate that it's an experimental stimulus um, with a target um, and the target is the black character presented. Um, the last thing I want to point out, so for the letter column, so um, the two columns that I described before are all categorical columns. So I mean that the value of the columns are categorical, right. uh, but the letter column, uh, I mean, depending on how you choose the threshold, right? But we really consider you can have many different letters. So we sure. call that the value column. And so to annotate a value column in your head annotation, you can have a hash symbol. Um, and so now the head tools, given your um, events TSV file and your JSON file contain the head annotation, it would automatically assemble the head string for each of the event. Um, so for example, here uh, we show the um, assemble head string for the first row of the events file. So it will combine the annotation for the show letter type, um, the target purpose, and then it will replace the value in the letter column, you know, from the um, hash symbol. And here is the full head annotation for that specific event, um, automatically assembled by the head tools. Okay. Yep. So now, you know, for each of the event, you have the head annotation. Now you can go um, in your analysis tool. Um, let's say I want to pull out the target events. So before, you know, people will have to say, okay, I want to pull out event number thirteen. Um, but now you can use the head tags directly to do your epoching. Um, so I say, if I, my query is the experimental stimulus and target, then the head tool will pull out all the event with the head annotation in them. And so you have your epoch based on you know, the actual stimulus target. Um, and so that's really how um, you can provide head annotation um, in the BIS ecosystem. Okay.
So um, I think my, my next question when I see this, because it can be a bit overwhelming if you don't know head, and on top of that, if you don't know bits and you don't know head, this is like, oh my God, this is like, what, where do I even get started? So I think when I see this, I'll be like, um, yeah, just start bit by bit by adding, also especially when you see the, the size of the head schema, it's easy to get lost. So how would you um, like suggest people they should go about getting started annotating their event, for example. All right. Um, yeah, Kay, you wanna? Yeah, so there are a couple of things. Um, we um, have some tools and we're about to have another set of tools, but um, let me mention that there is an interactive tool called CTAGR which uh, can be run as a stand standalone platform independent, it's a Java uh, program that will take an events file and mm -hmm. uh, it'll go through and it'll um, extract all the categories and it'll present them on the side for you to annotate. Right. And you can then take them one at a time and it'll show you, it'll make suggestions. You can do keyword searches um, and it'll save it as a JSON file. So that's one way to do it. Um, you can also, we're working on a couple of other things um, and Young will show you, do you wanna show him the head, head tool? So one of the things that we recommend is that when you construct a JSON file with head annotations, that you don't use the bids validator to validate it until you use the head tools to validate okay. it. <laughs> and um, they are, as much better error messages, right. you know, the, uh, the head errors in bids are our head, are our messages, but the ones in the actual head tools are able to put a lot more context into it and make it a lot easier. So we have online tools, and here's an example of one of them that um, where you can take put in one of your bids event files and the JSON file, and it'll either validate it and, and puts pretty nice error messages, you know, gives you a list of what line and what was wrong with each okay. one. Um, and you also have the option of assembling it into an uh, an event file that consists of a column of the onsets and a column with the full head tags. Right. So, so we could do that. Um, we are going to be putting up very shortly something which if you put an event file in here, it'll generate a template with a JSON sidecar um, with all the categories and stuff and, and some dummy tags in there. And, you know, you can go from there and use the C tagger to fill to, it in. To fill it in. Right. Um, okay. And, you know, we're working on easier ways to sort of templates for starting points for things. Um, and, you know, as we get more tutorials out, I think that that will become easier. But I, I okay. think the, the key point here is that you should use the head tools um, to create your head annotations before and uh, before going to bids. Um, and, and that will help you and uh, make it easier as far as, it'll also help you detect errors in your event files. Yeah, <laughs> as, as, we, as we found, you know, there are miscellaneous things that appeared in various columns that were very much a surprise when we started got done to, to annotating. So um, I'll let Young, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So we have the headtask.org homepage um, where we will be putting um, a lot of documentation um, uh -huh. currently in progress. Um, so we would put in tutorials and quick guide so to get people, how people get started um, annotating the data set. Um, and then we also have the GitHub um, site. So this um, GitHub site will host all the different repository correspond to different um, aspects of our head ecosystem. So for the um, discussion about schemas and head syntax, um, people can go to the head specification repository and um, we'll have you know, some documentation here, but people can also use the GitHub issues and discussion to post questions and comments. Um, 
And then for the online tools, people can go to the head Python um, repository um, to ask any question about the validator. Right. Um, and then um, we also have uh, MATLAB tools. So, and this is very um, well integrated with EG Lab um, ecosystem. Um, so that, you know, from an EG Lab um, data set, um, you can um, start annotating that EG Lab data set immediately using this MATLAB plugin. Um, so, so let me just mention that um, the website, the uh, online tool website has um, RESTful services. And so you can call, call any of the, the things that are on the site um, as a REST service. And we have examples of calling them from MATLAB in, all, right. in, in, in the Python repository. So um, it makes it very easy if you want to, you have a head string and you want to validate it in MATLAB, you just make this little call and, call and, then, you and then you get back the your, stuff. So you, you get your feedback. Yeah. So, okay. but it it's, works for all the services that are, when we implement a service there, we implement it as a REST service also. So, um, you know, you, you can do it in, in there. In Python, it's more evident because, yeah. um, you know, it's more set up to do that, but it's it also too. very easy in MATLAB. All right. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay. That was a great overview. I think that we've gone through like a lot of things. Um, I think we're almost out of time. So I think I'm going to wrap it up here unless any of you has anything to add. Otherwise, nope. Very good. We appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk. And no, if no uh, people have questions about, you know, annotating or want to get started or anything, they can they can, are welcome to post an issue and we'll contact them and give them some help. Fantastic. Okay. And I'll post all the links to everything in the slides and to the slides uh, in the show notes uh, and on the video description on YouTube so people can find all the links to all that. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Very, very good. On take that care. note, ciao, everyone. Take care.